I'm Algernon Port. I'm the son of Rufus and Francis Port. Rufus Port and Francis Hale Port. His mother was uh, Louisa Warden Port, and his father was so John Port. Brothers. So the ports from Buchanan and the ports in Closerville, they're all well, related. My, grandpa, my grandfather, um, John Port, he, he was working on his farm. He has a, they had a farm back there that they called Big John Town. And uh, my father, well, he worked for the government for a while. And then after that, he worked for National Iron Ore Company. Oh yeah, my grandparents, I remember Grandma Lou very well. My grandfather died before I was born. Okay. And my second grandmother was um, Ella Holder Weeks. Well, she was a devoted Christian. And um, even on Sunday, she wouldn't like for us to even play in the yard. She would say, this a high Sunday. We're supposed to be quiet and uh, worshiping God. She was very devoted to Christianity. Grandma Lou, uh, on one side was public, Jonathan Goodrich, and on the other side was Jacob Padmo. Okay. And opposite her was uh, Jimmy Goodrich and Nancy Goodrich. In my memory, she was a quiet person. And as I said earlier, devoted to, to Christianity. She went to church nearly every Sunday, except she was sick and couldn't go. Okay. And the church at that time was on the old road and she used to walk from her place way down to the church at, at Port Hill on the old road. Mm -hmm. Well, as I said, she was just, she always tried to, um, bring us up in the correct way, doing the correct thing and uh, scolding us whenever we did wrong. There were two of us, Osea Holder and myself. Well, she was my mother's mother. She was married first to Francis Hill from Artington. Then after he died, she married to Roswell Dixon. He was an associate justice at the Supreme Court. And then after he died, later in her old age, she married to Reverend Weeks, J.I.A. Weeks. I went to White Plains School. And that was, uh, they used to call it Gablo School, but at the time when I got there, um, Gablo was there to Mr. Hustin, Marcus Hustin. He was the, uh, the principal at the time. And after I left there, I went to St. Patrick's School in Monrovia the Catholic school until I got to the eighth grade and I went to CWA until I left CWA to go to Germany for higher education. Well, we were actually four that we were always together. There was uh, Richmond Goodrich, Winston Holder, Osea Holder, and myself. And there were times A.B. Talbot from Bensonville, he joined us during vacation times, yeah. But we were the four in close of it that grew, practically grew up together and did things together. Well, we formed a, a club that we call the Young Boys and Girls International Club of Close of It. And uh, Richmond was the president. Winston was the vice president. I was the secretary. And Osea was the treasurer. So it was only the four of us that <laughs> <laughs> that started this club. Yeah. But then okay. later on, other people joined uh, Preston Padmo from uh, Bensonville, and so other, other people joined the club, and it became, you know, a group. But then when we all went to Monrovia to go to school, then the club just, you know, dissipated. Yes. We were, I, I think, yeah, we were actually the only people that had. The only children that had bicycles that we used to ride up and down, go to Bensonville, go to Carisbury, go to White Plains, just riding up and down. At times when we went nowhere, we used to go over to Bob Lake's house, under the house, not, it was before he renovated it to where it was the last one. But the first time under there, 
we could ride bicycles under the house. And there were the four of us who used to just ride in cycles, sit under the house and play and just, just pass time. Uh, we went to a lot of dances in um, Carisburg most of the time. There were, there were most of the girls were in Carisburg, so we used to go there. And there were times when um, Richmond used to carry uh, Patty's car and carry all of us. And there were times I used to take my grandmother's car and carry all of us. And sometimes Julia Sport used to take us all up there because he was trying to do something like, not a competition, but patronize the Kiris by people. So when he had dances at his house, the people from Kirisburg would come down to, to Crozaville to dance at his house. at uh, Public's house. I think there was once we had a concert and a dance there. And it was, it was quite fun. We just in our young boys and girls international club. We try our best to bring life and pleasure to, to Crozaville. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, they were straight. Six o'clock, we had to be home regardless of what. And if we got home later than six o'clock, there were times we got a spanking for being, for being late. Six o'clock, whether the sun is still shining or not, we had to be home. They were very strict on that. But on special occasions when we had permission to go to the dance or something, that was different. But ordinarily, six o'clock, we had to be home. Hmm. Well, I would say vacation time, riding up and down bicycles, that's, that, that's what I would say. Because practically, we had no particular assignment to do, but just ride up and down. But in the evenings, there were assignments that I had to do help in the yard to do. It was not every day we were riding up and down, but on occasion, we were ride up and down, but we had our jobs at home to do, our special little jobs to do. I was a little bit shamefaced. And even till now, I'm still a little bit shamefaced. So it was just to say, well, she's my girlfriend, but that was all to it. But uh, it was, actually, we were in our early teens then. And uh, we just knew just about, just for a little conversation or something like that. but. It was nothing actually serious. John Goodrich married Janetta Murray and I, 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 I participated in the wedding. And uh, another wedding in Bensonville, Annette Garnett. And I can't remember who she married, but I, I went to that wedding. But the wedding I really remember was John Goodrich marrying to Jonetta Murray because I, I stood in that. I was a little boy, but I, I, I participated in that wedding. Well, the happiest time I think was when actually when we were in Monrovia going to school and we went to Crozaville for vacation. That's the time we we enjoyed, we actually enjoyed Crozaville. When we were up there on vacation from Monrovia, riding bicycles up and down Crozaville and going up to Bensonville and so on. Well, I would say so because most of the people in Crozoville spoke the Pella dialect, most of them. And even, I think the only one of, in my group, I think only two of us could not speak the dialect. That was Richmond and myself, but Osea and Winston, they spoke the dialect fluently. But uh, they, they, they mingled with the, the people that, that they met there. Mm -hmm. Nearly everybody in Crozaville, the older people spoke, spoke the Pella dialect. Once in a while they had band, there was a band in from Bensonville. But I was in the early, early times. But then later on, they started having uh, record music. Not, not the disc they got now, but on, uh, I think it was 78 revolution per minute. And uh, it, as the time went on, that's the time, you know, it started having the modern, modern music. The band 
uh, went away and then the later music came up. And Julia Sport, he used to have a whole lot of records and had his last speakers all over the place when he was having a dance at his house here. Yeah. Teresa Murray, uh, Marie Talho, Doris Clark, but she was much younger. Cecilia P.S., she was uh, further down, lower, closer there. And I think, I think that's about, that's about all. Uh, to be obedient and always tell the truth, regardless of what. Uh, I can say now I got a lot of little whippings for not telling the truth. So <laughs> that stayed in me and until today now, uh, that's why I, I think that changed me to always tell the truth, regardless of what. But that was one of the main things they always taught us to do. Be obedient, obey older people, and always tell the truth, regardless of the consequences. But some of the time, the consequences will be whipping. <laughs> so we try to deviate from the truth a little bit. But it still got, it still caught up with us. I don't know how they actually manage, but if you went somewhere and did something out of the way, by the time you got home, they knew about it. How they knew, I don't know, but they knew about it. Besides in our, our group, well, Aunt Risha, she was the one that we always went to, and her cousin Nancy. Now, I don't know if because cousin Nancy was uh, Richmond's mother or and Drusha was Winston's grandmother, but those were the people that we looked to for guidance and um, to take, but you know, we look up to them for guidance and also as our road model. Road model. Jimmy Goodrich, he knew was Jimmy Nathaniel Dunn Goodrich. And he was a funny old man, he used to, to tailor people clothes, make clothes for people. He was, I think, a tailor. And he was kind of funny and always used to like to, to, use, to use some kind of little, you know, vulgar language, but not actually vulgar. He would say, for instance, damn it to hell, you know, something like that. <laughs> and that's what we used to, you know, like to say. And now when we're trying to say the same word, same thing that he's saying, but we would say, Jimmy to France. You know, we as children, we want to say, damn it to hell, but we can't say it because we will get whipping for it. So we say, Jimmy to France. So we don't, which we imp imply, damn it to hell. Uh, old man Adolphus <laughs> Clark. He was a Methodist minister. And, uh, but he used to go hunting sometimes. And he had his children. Um, I think the oldest one was Victoria Clark, but that was not by his wife, Rebecca Clark. His son, Joe Clark, was his, his uh, son by his wife. And his, he had a daughter called Doris Clark. But I don't know about the last one, the last daughter that he had, I, don't, I didn't know. At that time, I had left close up. You see, after my mother died, and I went to live with my father. I didn't used to go to Crozerville uh, for vacation as often as I went when I was living with, when my mother was still alive. Mm -hmm. So after that, I, I had a little kid at job at the Department of Commerce. So vacation time was the only time I could actually work full time because school time, I would only go to work after school. So. My vacation upriver, as we used to call Crozerville, was scarce then. I didn't go much to Crozerville anymore. Yeah, she used to live opposite the football field. And <clears throat> she had some children, Ruth Williams, who married to Charles McGill, and Edith Williams, who married to Lisa Holder. And I think Dennis Graham, 
Tyler Graham, uh, I, I think that's the four children she had. Catherine, Catherine Warden was married to Omen Edwin Eastman. Then Anne Sarah, she was married to Reverend Dunbar. And then my grandmother, Lou Port, and Aunt Jeannie, Jeannie Warden. And there was another sister. I think her name was Saraya. I'm not sure, but I think that's what her name. She died at a young age. And uh, her children, Charles McGill and Florence Mensko, were reared by Aunt Jeannie, by her, her sister, Aunt Jeannie Warden. Well, she was originally a holder. There's a, there was Sammy Holder, Richard Holder, and Retta Holder, who was, uh, who was Reverend Padmo's um, wife, James Holder, Sarah Holder, and my grandmother. They were, I think, 10 in all. Sammy Holder, Richard Holder, and Pat, Uncle James, James Holder, and, uh, and Sarah Holder. Those were the ones that were living when I was, that I knew. She was a strict woman, that I know for sure, because she didn't spare the rod. She had always said, you spare the rod, you spoil the child. But it was for my own benefit. She was strict, but she brought me up correctly. Uh, I gave her the thanks for who I am today. Right opposite the church, that was her house until she married Old Man Weeks. Then she moved down to Old Man Weeks' house uh, by the Methodist Church, by Reeves Memorial Methodist Church there. But her house was right opposite the Episcopal Church. No, 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 Jenny Warden House was further down the road. It was on the corner going to the old road, going out to, to Port Hill. There, that was Aunt Jenny, the old road and the, the new road. On that corner there, there was uh, Aunt Jeannie's house. Mm -hmm. Next to my grandmother's house in the olden days was a man called Robert Clark. But Rashford Weeks bought that property from him. And that's how it became Rashford Weeks' property. He built his house there. <laughs> a fair relative. Well, I would say my father. Rufus Pope, I would say. Well, he worked for some time at the Department of Commerce in the um, Produce Inspection Service at the Corp Bureau of Standard. And then later on, he, he, got, he got a job at Mano River to work in the office at the port. He became the dock superintendent for Mano River. It's a National Iron Ore Corporation. My first job as a cadet in the Department of Commerce, I got $13 a month. <laughs> $13 a month as a cadet. Went to school after school, I went to work, and at the end of the month, I got $13. And I got that, I stayed on that job until I left to go to Germany for higher education. We did, we had to learn the language before we could do anything. And uh, German is kind of a, a rough language. It's a hard language. It's, when I say hard, the grammar itself is hard. But when you learn it and you get used to it and get used to the people, it's, it's okay. But in the beginning, it was kind of hard, difficult because we had winter where we never had winter back home. So we went into a place where we have winter, summer, fall, and spring, different language. The school system was different, but in the end, it paid off. I started to like it, and uh, I pursued my, my career. When I came back to Liberia, I had completed my electrical engineering course, and I worked at Bong Mines as an electrical engineer. Bong Mining Company. Mm -hmm. Graduate, when I completed the engineering school in Germany, my father told me to write an application to Bongman. And I wrote the application to Bongman while I was still in Germany. 
and they answered me and told me that they couldn't give me a definite answer, but when I get home, I should make an appointment and go up to see the personnel superintendent, which I did. And I was home for about 10 days and I was employed at Bong Mines. And I stayed there until Bong Mines shut down uh, in, in uh, 1992, when the rebels came in. It was a nice 23 years that I spent in Bong Mines. Mm -hmm. You know, you had a, a good education and uh, then you had a good job. That way you get to know that education pays. Education really pays. Uh, I would say both of them were, I would say, good housewives and a good role, mod role model that people could follow, both of them. Well, most of the time there was uh, split peas and rice, or split peas and gravy, or boiled cabbage and stew with rice with cabbage. And then of course had gravy on the side of it. That was mostly the Sunday dinner, yeah. Well, I knew him fairly, fairly well because he was married to my grand aunt, uh, Henrietta Holder, who was the older sister of my grandmother, Ella. But she died of breast cancer when I was a little boy. So I barely knew uh, Uncle Tude. We used to call him Uncle Tude. But I didn't know that much about him. It was usually Ford or Chevrolet. I think Bob Blake, oh, Bob Blake had a Dodge car, a Ford pickup, and Chevrolet truck. Mm -hmm. And Old Man Weeks had a DeSoto pickup. And then later on, we start getting uh, more kind of cars. But when we were actually small, there were only Ford and Chevrolet uh, vehicles they had uh, mostly at the time. Because okay. most of the times we were kind of respectful. We tried to be as, as liberal as we could, you know, enjoyable as we could, but yet we were very respectful to the older folks and always watch what we were seeing and what we were doing because we didn't want to get in any trouble. Because they didn't hesitate to whip. When you did wrong, you got the punishment for it. Well, <clears throat> I have not been to Crozerville since, I think the last time I was in Crozerville was when uh, at my grandmother's funeral, Grandma Lou, and that was way back in 1986. And I don't think I went back to close of it since. No, he didn't actually have a profession per se, but just from his uh, common knowledge and uh, common sense, he was able to be the dock superintendent for Manon River Iron Ore Company. He was in charge of the port operations. He didn't have any actual formal training. He was just a graduate from the College of West Africa class of 35. Mm -hmm. Richmond had an American bicycle. That was, uh, at that time, it was not the type of bicycles they got now. The brakes were, they used to call it coaster brakes. You carry the pedal backward and that was the brakes. But it had no brakes on the handlebar. And, um, Winston and Osia had French bicycles. Winston grandfather, Rich, Uncle Richard, Richard Hola, ordered those bicycles from the, for them from France. And I had a rally, an English, English made bicycle. And of course, AB had an American bicycle also, a coaster American bicycle. Mm -hmm. So the only Winston and, and uh, Osia had the same type of bicycle 
but each one of us had different other types of bicycles. Mm -hmm. My grand aunt, mm -hmm. I had one uncle, Moses Poe. Mm -hmm. He was my father's uh, half brother. Mm -hmm. So he was the actual only uncle that I had. My mother on my mother's side, I had no, she had no, no sisters and brothers. She had no yeah. siblings. And my father only had one half brother who was Moses Pope. She tells me, she used to tell me stories about taking her bed sheet and making shirts for him to wear. That's, wow. what, that's, that's some of the story, those stories that she used yeah. to, to tell me. And sometimes I heard my father saying the same thing too. The happiest memory. Well, I would say vacation time after we left Crozaville and went to Monrovia to go to school. I would say vacation time when when we all went back up up river. We used to call it. So we went up river and uh, riding our bicycles up and down. Worry about we didn't have to worry about food or this or that. All we had to do is behave yourself and everything would be fine. Mm -hmm. If you did, if you misbehave, you got the punishment for it. In Monrovia, we had to walk from Prozabit to White Plains to catch the boat to go to Monrovia and come back to White Plains and walk from White Plains to Prozabit. Sometimes people from Bensonville used to go through Prozabit to White Plains to, uh, to catch the boat to go to Monrovia. And sometimes when you get to Monroe, the white plane, the boat gone. <laughs> you don't know the boat leaves five o'clock to catch the before the tide drops, because right at the at Stockton Creek there, they had a sand bank. And if the tide falls, the boat will get stuck on the sand bank. So they had to leave early to blast that sand bank before the tide drops. And they had to leave a certain time, leave Monrovia to come back to pass over that sandbank before the tire drops, the tire drops again. If not, the boat will get stuck there, the boat gone. Mm -hmm. But the, the time when we start going back to Cruzabit for, for vacation, we used to go by car. Now there were two ways you pass through Robertsville to White Plains and then go up to Cruzabit and go on to Bensonville. Or there were times the car passed through Carisburg Way and came down. But the boat season was over a long time ago, then we, we stopped riding, dry, riding the boat, start mm -hmm. riding cars and pick up then. Uncle Edwin Eastman, he married to my grand aunt and his children, uh, her, her son, Ernest Eastman, not Ernest, uh, Nathan Eastman. And Nathan Eastman children were Alvin, Ernest, Bernice, Teresa, and uh, yeah, I think that's them. Ernest Eastman, Alvin Eastman, Bernice Eastman, and uh, Teresa Eastman. Yeah. But I know people used to have brown sugar there. They used to make syrup from the from sugar cane. Because that was mostly they used to make, most of the people had keen farm. And from the keen farm, they used to make keen juice and sell it here to Monrovia to sell. He was a, how would I say? He, he was a, a, a very nice person and always used to write. I think he always criticized the government. From Charlie King time, he used to criticize criticized the government. Whenever he saw anything that he thought was wrong, he would write about it. So he was, he was also a school teacher. He used to teach at the Crozaville Public School. He was the principal at one time. Well, the school, at the time when he was principal, the school used to be up there on Port Hill behind the church and on this up on the side of his house, there was a big building there, and that was the, there where was the where they had the school. They used to call that thing Crozaville Public School. I would say we used to take her as let's say all of us used to take her as our grandmother because she was Winston's grandmother and Winston Richmond 
Osea and myself, we were all, you know, all together, cousins and friends. So we all took her as, as a grandmother also. No, her father was a Tyus. Her father was William Ty. He used to have, a, his house used to be next to Sammy Carter, uh, uh, to Sammy Holder's house. It was Andrusha house, went up the road where Andrusha house. The next house was uh, Sammy Holder house and the next house was William Ty's house. And his daughter was Ella Ty. That's how she got the name Ty. But she mm -hmm. married to a copper. She was the mm -hmm. daughter of old man William Ty. They want us to remember them by the training they gave us. That's, that's what I would think. The legacy mm -hmm. that they left behind, mm -hmm. you know, that they tried to instill in us mm -hmm. the training to always be yourself and uh, be who you are and always speak the truth regardless of what the consequences are. And of course, be respectful to older people. Well, I mean, I, pre I appreciate uh, the work that you're doing to try to bring some livelihood and some remembrance back to, to close of it. And how the old people, how they interacted with, with each other and how they live. Mm -hmm because some of the things are really, really uh, fading away. I don't think you can find anybody now in Liberia. I'm not sure, but I don't think you can find anybody now in Liberia who can actually dance the quadrille. That was a dance that was popular during our time. Now I don't, I don't see it there anymore. A long time when they had when Tedman was president and uh, when they're having any kind of celebration like the Independence Day celebration or something like that, Tedman would lead the Grand March. Then after the Grand March, they will have the core drill. After the core drill, they will have the tango and the foxtrot. And then everybody dance, you know, after that, the dance floor is open. Everybody goes and dance with whoever they want to dance with. But that official opening, the Grand March and the Cordrill. Well, the Cordrill, you have a, a leader that's only eight people, four women and four men. Each man has his, his partner. So and they, you have one commander, somebody commands it. And as he commands, everything he commands, that's how the dance goes. For instance, if you say 16 hands around the hole, then you all make a ring because you're eight, you got 16 hands. And then each man hold each, you know, you hold each other hand. And from there, then they go on and do all the different uh, commands and the drill, the dance goes on according to the command. Now the grand march is no command, but you follow the leader who most of the time during official a celebration that will be the president. He would lead the grand march. There's no command. You just follow him and do what he does. That's all. So yeah. The quadril, you could have three or four different sets because only six, only eight people can be in one set. Four women and four men. And you can have so many different sets. But the grand march, there's one long line of the men on one side and the women on the other side. Oh yeah, it's a big difference between the grand march and the quadrille. Big difference. You're marching, you're moving up and everybody else is behind you, you're moving up. And then what the man does, what the leader does, that's what the rest of the people does, just follow him. But now quadrille is a, a, a man giving a command. And as he gave the command, everybody follows the command. And it's so nice, everybody doing the same thing at the same time. Long time when people died, there was no funeral home. So you had to bury the person as quickly as possible before they begin to decay. Then later on, they had something, the formaldehyde. 
there's some chemical that they used to try to inject in the in the the corpse to keep it for a, one or two days longer. But you couldn't keep it for a week or so because it was not actual embalming. It was just putting this chemical, this formaldehyde, in the in the corpse so that it wouldn't de decay so quickly. But it was there was no actual funeral home that you could keep a body for a week or two weeks, or as the case is, it was not possible. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a virtual past master at the UBF, and I'm a 32 degree mason, and I joined the mason in Habel. There was a new lodge, a Masonic lodge that was just on the dispensation that was being opened in uh, Habel. And uh, I think it was seven of us from Bong Mines that joined at the, at the time. Because we actually found it not, I mean, we were the, act, the, at the first initiates of this uh, new lodge. And then after we had enough members, the Grand Master came and uh, dedicated the lodge. <laughs> I know. Well, it's the same way. My children used to like when I go into a Masonic meeting. <laughs> when well, I went to a Masonic meeting, when I came back, we call it the wages. Some of the, some of the excess room. Well, she had, she started this in the early fifties on Benson Street. It was just like a little cook shop where she only used to cook fufu and soup, and the. Most of the times, then the police officers, I think like Arthur Thomas, Philmo Johnson, uh, Tommy Bernard, they used to go there and uh, eat fufu and soup. And then gradually it started to develop. And then I left and went to Germany and there was still a little cook shop. But when I came back for vacation, it was this big restaurant on she had moved it from Benson Street, on Carey Street, right there, where in Mansera Yard, where Public used to live upstairs, and Mansera used to live downstairs. And in that, in that space there, she she built her restaurant. But when I came back now for vacation, that's the time I saw it, and it had just grown up to be what it was. The owner of the house, and I think the land also that uh, public used to sleep upstairs. Now I heard, I don't know how true it is, I just heard rumor that public did something for her, some kind of goodness or some favor. And she said, as long as public would live, he could live upstairs in her house. 